No, no, that's for me. Yeah. Keen. Very keen. Where do we go first? Hey everyone, welcome back for another episode. So the plan today is to stay out here overnight. Um, this is the first spot we've pulled up at. We've got Chris, you can see Chris over there getting ready. He's come out in his uh, B19 Haynes Hunter as well. Well, the plan for Chris though is he's gonna head off. So I'm gonna stay out here overnight, find some shelter behind one of these beautiful islands we have out here. Sort of surrounded by islands out here. My anchor is currently stuck straight up. So first job will be to probably unstick that and I didn't really anchor in the best spot I'm right next to a rock here. So might unstick that and move the pipe and then um yeah, continue on. Looks like we've got about eight meters viz here, so pretty good viz really. Little isolated rock, so hopefully there'll be some bait on it. There's a few birds getting around. Should be a pretty good day. I am a bit nasally, I'm a bit blocked up, so hopefully I can dive alright. Soon find out. Ah, uh, I really need to get this anchor on stuck. All right, better go. Once the anchor was free, I moved the boat well away from that rock. I just flat out anchored in the exact wrong spot, I reckon. I couldn't have made it any worse. But anyway, got the anchor up and um, moved her over. So I'm heading down here. You can see a few small grey mackerel. They were probably legal, maybe just. They've only got to be 60 centimetres of greys. Yeah, I had a pretty good feeling I'd find a bigger one than that, so I just let them swim. Having a bit of a look around here. It's probably maybe the third dive, third or fourth dive here. Yeah, I do a little bit of grunting there, and this curious coral trout just comes strolling straight in. It doesn't sit still straight away, and a bit of a technique thing I use there that I didn't really notice until I watched this video, and I probably do it all the time, but I sort of pulled the gun back and used my other hand to move it a little bit quicker. I seem to have a lot more control doing that rather than having your arm extended obviously and bring it back in closer, less leverage and you can just sort of swing it around a little bit quicker. Ended up landing this nice trout, first fish of the trip. First spot done, got that nice trout. We just pulled anchor and we're gonna move on, find somewhere else. Um, this is just another spot, it's just like a little pressure point off this rocky island sort of here. Gonna have a bit of a swim around. I did see a heap of stuff on the sounder there, so it's it's not very deep, it's only five meters deep where I am here. Heap of bait swimming around, staring up on the surface here, so um, hopefully there's some little greys getting around. Fingers crossed. Load up on some more greys, I love them greys. I did hang around with the bait for a little bit, but yeah, the greys didn't turn up. The bait, there's just that much bait and they just all sort of just sat there and not much was really happening. So I went out deeper, started doing some dives and ran that sort of 12-ish meter mark. I could just sort of make out this bommy here from the surface. So I dove down, had a bit of a look around. Straight away, I noticed a couple of good trout and I was sort of playing cat and mouse with me behind the bommy there. Just line up on it there and it ducks around the back and then another one pokes out and there was a definite bigger one there, way bigger than the other one, so I thought I'll try and get this big one and just didn't really play the game on this dive, so I decided to head back up, move around a little bit. I moved around to the left there, sort of away from that bomby and tried to approach it a little bit differently and see if I could get a good shot on at least one of those trout. So I'm heading down here. I've moved around to the left, like what I said. As I get to the bottom here, or throughout this dive, you'll notice that small red emperor that was in that previous dive. He sort of moved over. He's sort of a little bit curious as well, cruising around, checking out what's going on. 
So that first bombing is just out to my right there, you can't really see it in this viz. I just sort of edge forwards here and see if I can spot a trout. I see a nice trout there move across in front of the bommy. I wanted to see if I could find a bigger one. That was a decent fish, this one that I just saw, but yeah, I was hoping for a little bit bigger because there was definitely some bigger ones getting around. There's that little red emperor again. I decide, right, eh, I'm going to take this trout. Why not get a really good shot on this guy? Now, something interesting with this fish was it hardly bled. Now, this shot here, you don't actually see me with my knife in its gills, but I did get the knife in there and, you know, give it a good cut. It didn't really bleed much, so I had my spear in my hand there, so I thought I'll stick my spear in there as well after I put my knife away, and still not much blood. But yeah, when the fish was filleted, it looked really good. The flesh looked really good. Another good trout off this spot. Cracker. Didn't bleed very much, which is a little bit concerning. Hopefully the flesh is alright. I did stone it, so I don't know if that made a difference or or what, or whether it may be bled as I shot it, or just straight away as soon as I shot it. But anyway, another good one into the esky. Another location <laughs> change and very similar looking country, similar looking bait. This bait was sort of stacked up on every pressure point that we dove on this particular day. So you see some fusiliers there, there's some banana fish, there's some herring, uh, there's some small white bait. You see the schools really clustered up here. There was grey mackerel moving through, and as I was going to find out, there was also some Spanish moving through. You see right through the water column, just stacked with bait. I head down to this edge here. Now this is the edge that I just dove in that previous clip. I could see that there was like an undercut, so I went down, have a look down there. Big school of GTs comes cruising out from that undercut. There'd have to be some jacks hanging around here sometimes, I reckon, sitting underneath that little edge there. Nothing on this dive, just stacks and stacks of bait. I was really hoping for a decent grey. I had seen some smaller greys and I was hopeful for a bigger one to come strolling through. Now, I did have this one swim past me a few times and I just never really had a shot. And this time, I went down and it presented me with a really, really good shot. Nice grey mackerel here. Now reviewing that footage, it looks like I shot clean over its head, but I ended up with a pretty good holding shot. Put up a little bit of a fight, but it was pretty knocked around from that shot. Pulled it up. Now greys, every single time you go to grab their tail, they'll do this. I go berserk for that one last little run. I was very careful to try and steer its mouth away from me, because those little needle teeth are razor sharp. So sharp. Great grey. Up into the float boat. I love it when my dive buddies have got a float boat. I don't actually own one, so it's awesome when I got one nearby. Chuck it straight in. Along with about 10 litres of water as well. Sorry, Chris. Now, like I mentioned before, I was going to find out there was actually some good Spanish getting around. Now, I did notice some bigger mackerel sort of sitting just out of viz on a few dives, and I just wasn't 100% sure that it was a grey or a Spanish. I did actually think that they were just big greys just sitting out wide. And I was really hoping to pick up one of those big greys. So I'm heading down here. I've dived sort of just out away from that edge. Still plenty of bait sitting out here. But I notice this mackerel. Now this GoPro makes the viz look a bit better than what it was. I could see it was a mackerel. I could see it was big. I tried to put that sort of mid-body shot in. A little bit closer to the head preferably. But yeah, that sort of mid-body shot. Started pawing and it was around here that I sort of thought, I'm pretty sure this is a Spanish, not 100%. I think it's a big grey, but it could be a Spanish. Oh, yep. Yeah, it started putting up a fair bit of a fight and I thought, oh, I'm pretty sure this is a Spanish. I've got a bit of a glimpse of it here. I could see the spear had pulled back through a little bit. Asked Chris to head down, put a second shot in. It's funny that just two fingers up, every Spiro knows it from videos and just from diving and diving with everybody. That's sort of like the international symbol to get down there and put a second shot in, please. That was a pretty hot little session. Hard doing this with one hand. I did have these in Chris's flight boat, so I just transferred over. Flight line. Grey and a Spanish. A couple of great 
great eating mackerel. Way more food than what I need in terms of protein, but definitely getting low in the freezer, so I'm happy to take a few. Righto, process these, I'll get these into the esky. Chris is heading off and um, I'll be doing it alone now. I'm gonna dive a little bit more because I'm right near an old island that I've dived five or six years ago and I'm really keen to have another dive there. Um, after that, obviously need to find somewhere to anchor up, sort some food out and just chill. Enjoy the time out here, I think. Beautiful old Haynes. How good are these old Haynes hunters? I didn't get anything at this last spot. It was such an amazing dive. All that soft coral, there was fusiliers everywhere. There was banana fish, there was some smaller little white bait stuff down on the bottom. Might have even been herring, little little herring. Over on that backside underneath that cave, it was stacked full of fish and such an amazing spot, incredible dive. I'm so glad I came back. Didn't get a fish, but still amazing. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, it's up past three, so I need to find somewhere to anchor for the night. I definitely call today a success. We didn't get fish off every spot, but some of those spots were just alive. That last spot was absolutely unreal. Plan from here, I'm gonna get cleaned up, obviously. We've got a bit of extra water there, have a bit of a shower. I've got a recipe from the 99 Noob Spiro recipe book. It's a pretty basic ceviche. I've got all the ingredients for that here. So I'm gonna make that up with some of that trout. I'm also going to cut a bit of the tail off that gray mackerel and just have some of that sashimi because it's so delicious sashimi. And the other fillet of the trout, I think I'm just gonna cook that up in a pan with a bit of salt and pepper and have it on a wrap. I think that'll be like my main meal. But for now it's like four o'clock. So I've still got a heap of time. Yeah, I might just get changed, put some tunes on and just chill, maybe set my bed up and stuff like that. I might give you a bit of a run through of all the gear that I brought out with me. Probably way too much gear, but anyway, at least I'll be comfy. So like what I said before, the plan is to do up a ceviche, as well as that, a little bit of sashimi with the grey mackerel. And I'm just gonna cook some of the cold trout just on its own with a bit of salt and pepper and make up a bit of a wrap later on. If you haven't done a ceviche before, it's pretty simple. Basically a bit of fish, couple of limes, some red onion, avo, garlic, a little bit of tomato, some of that jalapeno, and that's about it. Let it cook for a little while in the lime juice, mix it all through, and I've got some corn chips there to eat it on after. It's gonna be good. First things first, I'm just gonna knock the sides off one of these trout. Um, I'll pick the long slender one. It was it weighed a little bit less, so a little less meat. Sorry, anyone who's like a good cook, because I'm not, <laughs> I'm very rough, but I'm sure it'll be tasty. You want really thick chunks. You want them to sort of be thin enough for that lime juice to, to cook them into the pan. This is what's gonna cook the trout. So what I might do is I'll get this happening. I've got cuts all over my fingers, stinging like crazy. Now the recipe only asks for two limes, but I'm doing three because I've got that real big open container. Make sure they get nicely coated. Basically do this until you run out. Along with that, we need a couple of cloves of garlic. As for lime zest, sorry, no lime zest. Might just put a little salt and pepper in there. As for the rest, it's pretty well just chop it up, chuck it in. Once the fish is cooked, we'll give it about 20 minutes, half an hour, something like that. And then um, it'll be ready ready to eat, basically. It's, it's pretty simple, really simple. So I'm just gonna dice all the tomatoes up. It says to get rid of the inside, so I'll do that. Put a little bit of capsicum in as well. I forgot to mention that earlier. It says uh, green or yellow capsicum, so I've got a green one. A little bit of red onion, a little bit of avo, and I'll just do a little bit of the jalapeno and some coriander and that's it and i've got some corn chips there set that aside and just take just the tail off that gray mackerel and um have that as a bit of sashimi while this fish is cooking
Grey mackerel, sashimi, and paradise. It's even better after it's been frozen a little bit. It's still good fresh though. So you can see it's like kind of gone white. It'll be um, oh, super tasty. Now it says to tip the lime juice out, but there's not really much in there. It's sort of all soaked into the fish a little bit. So I'm just gonna leave it. All this stuff can just go straight in. Lemon zest would have been good. But anyway, can't have everything. Put the abo in. I'll just mix this through. Pretty sure I was meant to put that on as like a garnish, but anyway. That's dinner. With all the little ones. Oops, that killed it.